Hi, this is Amy Lewis, Cisco Marketing, and we're here with another episode of Engineers Unplugged. Uh, Engineers Unplugged. I've got Brian Gracely and Jason McCarty, and we're going to be discussing Secure Hybrid Cloud. So tune in, turn on, and get ready. We're going live. Thanks, Amy. Uh, as, a, uh, as a customer, we had um, previous coming to, to work for EMC, we had a lot of use cases where in the financial markets we would, we would really need to scale to a, 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 a hybrid cloud. And Brian, can you give, us a, give me a little bit of information on some of the methods that you guys use to, to leverage this type of computing? Yeah, absolutely. So, thanks. So, what we do at VirtuStream, VirtuStream is a service provider that's leveraging a lot of the technologies that are here today, Cisco and, uh, and VMware and some others, Intel. Uh, what we do is we've got a, a pretty unique use case that we see from a number of customers. And it looks something like this. So typical uh, hybrid cloud type of architecture we tend to talk about. We're going to have some sort of public uh, cloud service that we provide. That's what VirtuStream provides today. You're going to have a set of, of private resources, private data center, or private cloud. And in essence, you want to be able to move this resource, or maybe copies of this resource, clones of that resource, or maybe resources that you've recently brought in through an acquisition, whatever that might be, and you're thinking about, I want to move it to a public cloud for a number of reasons, right? right? Um, so what we do is, there's a couple of things that have to be in place. First and foremost, we want to make sure we have secure network connections, uh, your typical sort of MPLS or IPsec VPNs, okay. right, which you'd expect. The next thing we've got is all of these workloads are running on uh, hardware, x86 hardware, that has Intel TXT enabled, TXT. right? Okay. So uh, we've been talking about TXT for a while now, but there haven't been a lot of really interesting use cases, and we've come up with one that we think is pretty interesting. What we do is we actually, um, we can do a couple of things. We can do this thing called geo-tagging, and geo-tagging basically sounds exactly what it is. Where is this device? So you're tying that workload to the actual physical device? To the physical device. Now, okay. the reason this is interesting, um, which sounds kind of weird when we're doing virtualization because you tend to think that things move. Right. When you're talking about things that have to be within compliance, mm -hmm. right? And especially if we were in the United States, not such a big deal if it was in New York versus say Washington DC, right. but if we were in Europe, if that workload and that data set moves from say England to France, I may have violated laws, Correct. right? So what we do to make this very, very simple is we do geo, geo tagging. We also have a concept we call geo fencing, which allows you to basically create you know, a, a geographic region that it can stay in. So think about it as like a resource pool, but with geography tied right. to it. Okay. And then what we can do is we're going to have resources over here on the other side, if I can get my colors right, over here that are going to be synced. So we've got a management station that's over here, management that's over here. These two are going to be in sync. Right? We're going to create uh, what we call trusted resource pools. Okay? And trusted resource pools are the things that say it's TXT enabled okay. and it's got certain characteristics that are tied to this geotagging. Right. Okay? And then I can do what we typically do, right? your vMotions, your long distance vMotions, those sort of things. But what it does is it says I can only move it to a machine that's associated with this trusted resource pool. And you're following the parameters of the geotagging and the geofencing. Absolutely, and it's going to try and it's going to look at that not only to make sure that it follows the virtualization and the application things, but it's also going to look down at the BIOS and it's going to make sure that this is a trusted resource, this is a trusted resource, as they're tied back to the same root of trust that's on here. And so, as a as a company that has private resources that's looking at a public cloud, uh, this type of service that's now available and the fact that it's got uh, geography tied into it, not just you know does it go to TXT. Now they can think about, am I, am I in compliance? Am I geography in compliance? Right. Can I make sure that when my dev and test guys clone off a machine, which they do all the time to right. do testing, that if it, if it gets into this pool, they click the button that does a movement, it's not going to go to something that could be infected, and we're seeing, as we're seeing all the time now with you know, uh, Asian companies or Asian you know, governments right. that right. are doing that stuff. So kind of a neat um, new evolution of this technology that we're seeing, and um, it's, what it's really doing is it's letting people know that this whole idea of, of private to public hybrid cloud and secure That's hybrid true. cloud is available today. Um, and I think we'll see more and more companies wanting to take advantage of these types of technologies. Very nice, especially in an automated fashion. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, sort of a, a new set of stuff. Um, it's really great for uh, 
production workloads. It's really great for workloads that need to be compliant. So things for manufacturing, things for government, things for healthcare. Um, as you were saying, you know, there's going to be all sorts of scenarios where you want to take advantage of new resources. Yeah. You guys, you guys talk about it all the time with Vplex. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we tend to talk about it all the time with customers that do business applications. So kind of a neat evolution that's yeah, going well, on. Previously, uh, previously before coming into federal, I was in financials as a customer, sure. and it was very common for us to. Uh, particular times of the year, student loan applications, things like that, they would ramp up, and it really doesn't make a lot of sense to go in and plan for that 100% utilization all the time at a much higher rate, so this, this is a great solution. Yeah, so it's great. FISMA for federal, HIPAA for healthcare, for government, all those standards. So yeah, something they can now look at and know it's a reality. Yeah. Nice, nice. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, you know what I'm gonna say. You know what time it is. You might not know what time it is. Oh, it's... It's unicorn time. So I want to see a secure hybrid unicorn. Go. <laughs> Jason. Oh, Jason didn't know he signed up for this. <laughs> so, oh, I like I like where he's going. Yeah, nice, nice. Oh, I, oh, he's got a real good style here, people. This is this. Oh, I like it. I like it. That's. <laughs> And look, look at the rainbow magic, the rainbow. and it's it's secure. That's a very secure. Knowing these guys, they know their business. This is a secure unicorn. I appreciate that. Yeah. So until next time, uh, thanks Brian, thanks Jace. We'll see you next time on Engineers Unplugged. <laughs>